People used to say that uh, Portland had more comics people per capita than any other city in the country. Now I think it just has more comics people, period, than any other city. Uh, Portland's like, for comics, like what Hollywood is for movies, you know? There's a lot of cartoonists in Portland, Oregon, um, for a variety of reasons. I think the, the origin of it is Mike Richardson of Dark Horse Comics in the 80s and 90s was uh, sort of evangelizing for the city, telling people what a great place it is to live and what a terrific place it is to freelance from. You know, you go out to just a signing at one of the local bookstores and, you know, there'll be, you know, like Matt Fraction and, and you know, I mean, not, like all these hot rod guys, you know, uh, walking around. So I, it's pretty cool. A lot of my inspiration for the comics I actually write comes from outside the medium. Like uh, the, the miniseries that I wrote that's over here, uh, there's a lot of Joan Didion that went into that. There's a lot of Hunter S. Thompson that went into that. Finding those kinds of voices and those kinds of ways of looking at things, just so I'm not recycling the same old stuff that I've seen in a million comics I've already read. That, that's really important to me. Recently, I was listening to Major Tom from David Bowie, and I got the idea to turn that into like an action team. So, you know, just kind of weird stuff, but it just visually, I kind of roll it around, and then all of a sudden I just sit down and it starts coming out. But I like kind of the independent, offbeat, not necessarily the superhero books anymore. The words aren't what carries the story. The images are what carry the story. You're not just writing for images, you're writing for a particular artist. You're writing for somebody else's hand. You're not even writing for a camera. You're writing for something that's going to be drawn by somebody. And that chemistry and keeping that in mind is the most important thing to making comics that read well and look interesting. I love the process of making comics. I love the process of collaborating with artists. I love the kind of back and forth that you get when you're texting each other like five or six times a day. Like, but what if we, oh God, I came up with the greatest idea. What if it looked like that? Oh, that's cool, but how about, that's the fun part for me. Comic conventions are awesome. I like the ones that are actually about comics. Uh, there are a lot of them that have expanded into all of pop culture. Like, oh, I'm going to Comic-Con next week, I can't wait. Oh, really, so what comics do you read? Oh, I don't read comics. Okay, fair enough, it's a different kind of thing. I love the conventions that are comics focused because that's my people, that's the kind of thing I like. Media nowadays, you have to be cool, you have to be hip, but no one really gets to see what you're really interested in, such as comics, Pokemon, Digimon, Power Rangers, I don't know, but this is like a great way for people to reconnect with themselves and they're able to be nerdy and be okay, and it's totally cool, if that makes any sense. So for me, cosplay is exactly what it breaks down into, costume play. So anybody wearing a costume is a cosplayer. And truly, I think what drives cosplay is the fandom of it all. I think it's a way for people to connect with their favorite work, their favorite comic, their favorite character, and it's something nostalgic about it. It's something that makes you get creative, like, oh crap, I don't have this outfit, what can I do to make this outfit? And it just pulls that creativity juice in your brain. The people who dress up as uh, Deadpool and Harlequin are the number one and two cosplayers at conventions, and you ne they're never frowning, and they're never sad, and they're never bummed, and they're just happy to be in that place that's kind of accepting of them. I'm a veteran. I have trouble with crowds. Okay. So this is actually helping me. Oh yeah. Being behind a mask, no one knows it's me, mm -hmm. but yet I'm still getting the therapy I need. That's outstanding. Yeah. It's kind of like a dream come true for you to actually be the character, even for a certain amount of time. It's, it's just that childhood, nostalgic, dreams come true kind of feeling. It's hard to explain. Actually, the, the best Thing that has happened so far as a consequence of something I've written is when I went to a convention a while ago and there was somebody cosplaying as a character I'd helped make up. That was amazing. It was amazing. 
comic books are fun in their nature and people who like to dress up as characters want to go out and have fun and it's good safe fun and um, I've seen many people who probably shouldn't be wearing that tight of a costume <laughs> but I've also seen people who are you see these people and they're, they're, nobody's unhappy at a comic-con the only person who's unhappy is the you know the mom who just laid down a couple you know 20 bucks or something for Billy but she but really Billy's happy Well, I'd hope that after you know, somebody reads my work, they you know, buy a second copy of it and then cut every single page and frame it and put it up on my wall. That doesn't happen very often. Um, you know, once you're done reading a comic, you put it someplace in a box, in storage, you give it to a friend, you take it to Goodwill, you throw it in the trash, it gets saved, it doesn't get saved, yeah. who knows. If it connects with a reader, great, I'm happy. Buy what you like, buy, or buy what you think you like. And uh, buy that, and then you're always gonna have that memory of it. And so it doesn't matter if the value is now in the 50 cent bin in my back room, or if it's a $500 comic, or $10, or $20, if you paid two or three bucks for it. It's the value, it's the memory you have of it. When you went to the coffee shop next door, or when you went out with your girlfriend or boyfriend and you bought it and had that experience, that's what you're buying. You're buying nostalgia and you're buying the experience. You're not just buying the commodity.